say anything. It's all over. Everything. What is this place? The environmental controls here seem extremely strict. They're so big. Six to each side, with one directly across. Thirteen in all. Looks like each block has a name inscribed on it. You've got great eyesight. Hmm, let's see. Peter, Andrew, Boanerges, Thomas, John, um... Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. And the last one? It appears to say Marian Kind. Marian Kind. I think I've heard that somewhere. It means the child of Mary. This is where we store all the really dangerous items. Stuff like this. Actually, they're all emulators, and they've all been sealed, including the one we just retrieved. Why are these Zohars here? Well, our corporation does dabble a little in everything. Besides, these days, you can't get by without having something to deal with the Gnosis. And we definitely can't wait around for the Federation to get off its lazy butt. What's in the room across from here? Nothing pleasant, I'll tell you that much. You're not going to show us? Trust me, it ain't something you'd want to see. Even if we were to consider the diversity of your businesses, you're still a Foundation, right? I mean, the weaponry on this ship far outclass those on any warship. Who are you people, anyway? We were more or less a government organization previously. Well, I guess if you want to see it that badly... You, you weren't gonna like it, didn't I? All of these specimens appear to be humans whose bodies turned into Gnosis. Transformed bodies. I've only heard of them before. Most people just turn white and shatter to pieces. But there are a few exceptions, and they end up like this. We've named this one Betty for now. It's hard to look straight at them, but I don't want to refer to them by some code name or number. It's just not right to treat the dead like mere objects. Is that a lady? She was a little girl. The last time we saw her. People turning into Gnosis? Have you learned anything about them? Not much. Plenty of Gnosis remains have been recovered to date. But nobody's learned a thing from them. You know what they're composed of? No. Sodium chloride, plain old salt. Even their translucent bodies are mostly made up of water and sodium hydroxide. How can ordinary compounds like that form creatures like them? No one really knows why those who survive Gnosis encounters always turn into one of them. Some people think they're a new type of virus. Others say 
They're beings from another dimension who take on temporary forms in this one. Always? No exceptions? Nope. Not as far as I know. So they could be from another dimension? Wouldn't that mean that their true forms might exist somewhere else? Who knows? All that's certain is that they're hostile to humans. Not that such a sentiment is unique to them. Chief, is something wrong? You don't look so good. Huh? No, don't worry. It's nothing. So... So when did this all begin? Unofficially, phenomena like this have been occurring periodically over the past few centuries. But, after a certain incident, the Gnosis leapt into the forefront of history. A certain incident? The Milshin Conflict. Hmm? Joachim Mizrahi. It was he who opened Pandora's box and unleashed the Gnosis upon the galaxy. And we're all paying for his ambition. Joachim Mizrahi. The brilliant scientist who founded the UTIC organization. Brilliant? He was a lunatic. Unable to bear his curiosity, he invited the Gnosis into our world. Lunatic? The Foundation was established after the war by the newly formed Second Milshin government to clean up and investigate the facts behind the incident. Technically, that's our real job. Problem is, the funding's tight in peacetime. On top of that, running the Foundation takes a staggering amount of money, and the management of these Zohars ain't cheap either. So, we ended up privatizing part of our operations and became a Foundation. We never imagined that some of our side businesses would hit it so big, though. wasn't like that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I've started talking without activating the mic again. So, out of one cutscene into the next one, I believe they say. So, yeah, about that room back there. Uh, if you know Yoshino Gears, you may remember that from a certain room in Shevat. I will say no more of it. And yes, as you could most likely infer from the uh, events that took place in there, Xion is really worried that... Um, she will end up like Cherenkov. Uh, which would suck. Definitely. Uh, the jury's still out on that though. She has not been partially nocified and she has not had any sort of strange... Uh, well... pains or anything at this point. And as for uh, Joachim Mizrahi being a uh, lunatic, I think you should withhold judgment until um, late in episode 3. Okay, good of you to give us a whole cutscene for that. Yeah, the objective now is to find Momo. And check our email. So, yeah, now we can uh, return to the cathedral ship if we should like to. I think I'll actually uh, end the episode at the next save point. Sorry. Well, whatever that would be.
Yeah, we're gonna see th uh, the last room actually in the, the uh, one um, outside of the uh, Hall of Horrors in a different perspective in episode 3. Uh, look forward to that. More email, more loading. Ho ho! Yes, code disarm key plugin. Decode encrypted email and restore the original text. This is actually critical for um, one of the uh, email chains. Uh, well, as far as I recall, anyway. Uh, however, I think I've actually missed that. And, well. Now the uh, eggs accessories are uh, made cheaper as well. That is a good thing. Makes it more affordable. And uh, just uh, one thing about this email here. You can go off on the side here, but if you do not move directly at this point, well, yeah, along this path here between the guards, that email will never trigger. And that will suck to high heavens. At least if you're, uh, n well, if you are taking that uh, sub quest or uh, have any uh, dealings with that uh, email chain. Okay, so we are right now at the isolation area, as you can see in the on the uh, blue orientation board or black or whatever in the blue part of the <laughs> orientation board um, so let's just um, check this place out start with the dock this is where you'll find the Durandal oh wait this is the Durandal we're on <laughs> right uh, we are not yet at the Gugai Foundation sorry this is where you will find the Elsa. Um, and some crazy people. Okay, so this is the uh, um, parliament. Okay. Yeah, that is also going to be an exciting cutscene. What are you doing, Mr. Man? Okay, so we know there's a path there, uh, but they don't like us. Uh. Oh, I guess that's a realian. I, I, I'm sort of creep. Out. <laughs> okay. And the use of the word launch here is probably the most egregious mistranslation in the whole game. It is, of course, meant to be a shuttle. But either way, it is closed, so we can't use it. That is all for the dock. And you are a busy man. Okay. Yeah, that's another clue that uh, our final destination is indeed going to be the park. But uh, yeah, we should have another well, have a good look at the area because eh, manners. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. Okay, um. Right. I just looked ahead in the guide and uh, I am going to need. 
a whole lot of money, and I will need them soon. Uh, I th think... Yes, yes, um, yeah, I can, I can move on here, uh, it won't be a problem. Um, yeah, the guide actually has me returning into the Elsa and uh, use the UMM point there to sell off the stuff, but I think we'll find a UMM point somewhere in this location as well. Creepy of you, but um, who am I to judge? I don't think I like where that transition is going. <laughs> yeah, the game room. Come back to the safe point soon. First, we want that casino passport. And uh, before saving the game and calling it a day, we can. Oh, let me just double check that first. Yes, we have decoder 16. What do we have? Oh, what does it just say? Yeah, okay. Corridor to calm room. Um, hmm? Right. So, we shall go there and uh, get that treasure. And then we will get to call this a day. Or a session. Or a recording. Call it an episode either way. Either way. Okay. Start at this guy. Not even a funny name. <laughs> I am so superior. Well, I mean. I say superior, uh, but yeah, these enemies can't hurt me.
Right, uh, something strange just happened. Uh, those big yellow enemies I just fought? Well, I used a double square attack with Xion on uh, one of them. And uh, the game informed me that a compression organ is damaged. Do not look at me, young lady, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I, I, I never found out what really, uh, well, if there was any effect, but um, yeah, that happened. Is this the, uh, no, been in for right? Obviously, or else it would have told me that uh, uh, well, something about unlocking. Right. Maybe this is the way to the palm room. Yeah, I do get a lot of uh, well, not a lot, but I do get uh, a. Um, certain amount of uh, well, points of various sorts. Uh, I'm just going to see if I have any analysis info for uh, these enemies we find here in uh, the ship here. Okay, Anna's Goblin, Met, Coarse, Guy, Fish. Okay. That's all good then. <laughs> and that fight was literally over in seconds. That guy. What just happened? Okay, so something was just smashed in that other room. I have no idea what. Aha, yeah, and here's one of those with the uh, compression organ. I'll see if I can show you that actually. Damage with a critical hit, if you say so. Oh really? I did not hurt the compression organ this time. Well, not that I can play. Oh, okay. Um, I was hoping uh, for the point bonus, but alas, that was not to be. Okay, so here it is. The Stim DX. Okay, well, I'm a little hazy as to where exactly the uh, EVS exit points are. So, what? Something else just got destroyed. Um, well, okay, so strange thing is going on at this uh, virtual revisit to a... Uh, oh, no, screw it. <laughs> okay, I will see you next time and then I will be back on the Durandal in the game room, so I will, uh, yeah, see you then.